Eamon Khan here, four seconds out of the shard with boxer promoter Ben Shalom. Ben, it's good to see you. Good to see with the sun shining heading into, hopefully the sun is shining on one of Callum Simpson or Zach Chelly and Barnsley at the Oakwell Stadium. How are you feeling for that fight week? Looking forward to it. I think uh, whenever you go to a local place where they're so enthusiastic, where they're so even grateful that such a big show is coming, just makes it that much better and that much sweeter and reminds me of the early days of Bournemouth, probably times two mm. because the tickets have just been so quick and we're at 7,000 so quickly and it's obviously outdoor almost instantaneously. But yeah, it's a, it's a special, special fight week. But for, for two fighters that a lot of people fancy Zach Chelly and, and Zach, you know, I've seen a lot around Zach Chelly go into to Callum's town and, and, and things like that as a champion. But Zach wouldn't be headlining on Sky Sports otherwise. Not it's, it's because of Callum's following and it's because of Barnsley. And so I think it's a massive opportunity for both of them. And yeah, one I'm really looking forward to. You've got a star on your hands in the form of Caroline Dubois. There's obviously the spectre of a Katie Taylor fight yeah. in the horizon there. She's got to look great at the weekend, but do you feel you can deliver that Katie Taylor fight? Do you feel that you can get that over the line for her? Obviously, the ball's in Katie Taylor's court. Let's not be, let's not be stupid. But you know, if she wins on Saturday, mm. if it's a very, very tough fight, I believe one that's being overlooked against Mary Romaneo, one of the toughest fights in the division, someone that's only lost on a clash of heads before. So, you know, a seriously tough fight for Caroline, but one that you know, hopefully she can show her level. But then Katie's got a choice, you know. It's either fight Caroline or or, or will vacate. I don't believe she'll come back down to this weight again. Um, it's a fight, obviously, with love. It's a fight that can be huge. Mm. But I don't see Katie back at this weight. So hopefully it can happen before she retires, whether at this weight or the weight above. Um, but in terms of Caroline's next fight, uh, if, if if Caroline's to stay at this weight, obviously I'd be delighted if Katie comes back down. But um, we're probably looking at, at more likely if you're looking at other big domestic fights, maybe the Rhiannon Dixon fight um, next. But yeah, that 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 Katie Taylor fight is obviously the one that Caroline wants and the one that we'll push for and the one that she wants to put on a performance to to show the world why she deserves it on Saturday night. Very shorter card than usual offering, I guess. I feel like maybe the could have been like a Natasha Jones or a Vidal Riley sort of added to this card. What was the reason behind maybe there not being maybe one or two extra fights on the card? Look, Stevie McKenna's on there in a in a in a in a in an interesting fight against Joe Laws after his win against Michael Hennessy Jr. Uh, Billy Denise, who we think is a great prospect coming from Manchester, is on there in the light heavyweight division. Conor Coyle fights Cal Lamoti. Conor's unbeaten, number two in the WBA. Really, for the Irish contingent that's usually get left out, you've got mm. Stevie and Connor on there for for the Sky viewers from Ireland. So it was about doing a local card, and there's a lot okay. of local talent on there. And uh, ultimately, when a fight sells out, just based off Callum Simpson within 24 hours, this the Saturday ultimately is about him. But Caroline Dubois is a huge star on the card as well. And, um, yeah, there's some big moments and big nights to come. Vidal's actually injured and has been injured since um, that fight. And Tasha Jonas were looking now at a very big fight for her. So this was this was what made sense. But for me, it's a cracking card. And it's a, it's, it's one of those proper British cards and, um, and topped off by a huge British title. But I wanted to get your take as a promoter. There seems to be a lot up in the air regarding where Queensbury promotions and their broadcast deal might end up. They're currently on TNT Sports. Frank has said that they've got a contract there and they're going to honour it. But the rumours are that they might end up over in the zone. I just wonder how you feel and how that affects your position if two of the three promoters end up being on an app and there's only one promoter left on a broadcaster in the traditional sort of terrestrial TV sort of sense. Does that strengthen your position? Do you welcome that? What do you think it is the ramifications for the health of UK boxing? <sighs> For me, boxing's never been healthier. Okay. Look at what's going on now. A lot thanks to Turkey, Al Sheikh, and, 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 and Saudi, and what they've done, bringing promoters and networks together. Do I think for the sport to be at its best, you need 
a few different networks, particularly a mix of the traditional and new streamers. Yeah, hundred percent. And 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 I've been always been, you know, you think of the stars that have been built on 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 free to air, but then latterly Sky is needed, and, and and we feel it's a vital part of the boxing ecosystem. You know, the stars now coming through on Sky with the likes of Ben Whitaker, with the likes of Adam Azim, Caroline Dubois. I mean, I don't, I'll miss people off, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Is testament to having a mainstream platform as well. That, 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 but I think everyone understands that. And I actually think everyone started to integrate. And, and I believe with the Saudis so heavily influential in the sport and so passionate about the health of the sport, I think we're going to see a blend of, of everything. Obviously, what Frank does or what Eddie does is whatever's best for their business, but it doesn't affect us either way. And, and um, yeah, it's just rumours, as, as I can see at the moment. I've got to ask you, Liam Smith has had his say about the relationship between yourself and him ending on a sour note, I guess. What was your reaction to seeing those comments? And do you feel that it ended the way that Liam's presenting it? Not really, but I'm disappointed to see it. And obviously you have to like, look at yourself for why it feels that way. But I feel we had two, three great nights, Liverpool the headline and two big box office nights. And and yeah, but I have a lot of respect for, for Liam uh, as a fighter and his family. And um, yeah, I, I wish him all the luck with, with Josh Kelly. Chris Eubank Jr., you've signed Chris Eubank Jr. to a partnership deal. We'll get into that in a moment. But Canelo isn't going to be in the opposite corner for Chris Eubank Jr. What happened there? Look, as a promoter, it's what promoter's dreams are made of. So it's definitely something we'd have loved to do. It came late and the value of the fight that they could do on September the 14th just didn't add up or didn't match up. And I think there's a feeling that that fight will happen. I think it's a huge fight and I think it's a... It's going to be a massive fight when it does happen. Unfortunately, it's not on September the 14th. Um, but as I say, I do believe that that happens. Do you feel that like you'll revisit it for Cinco de Mayo next year? Yeah, I think so. Look, at the end of the day, no one knows what's going to happen in boxing. That's something I said to to Chris at the time. And, and as I say, as a promoter, what a, what a huge opportunity. Um, but ultimately, if the value doesn't meet meet the value of that how they're valuing the fight then and 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 admittedly they were it, it was just for september 14th then then you have to revisit it when it does what sort of opponent will you look for then in the interim considering that that might be the next fight because it's sort of like you got to make sure you put them in a good fight but also one that you know it can't be too risky because that is also in the offering as well well there's some huge fights for him aren't there um but we've just decided on his on, on, on his next fight and that'll be announced in the next week or two. I actually cannot say anything right now. Um, but just excited to have such a personality, one of the biggest stars in British boxing, probably the top three. And, and for me, his biggest fight's ahead of him and his chance to become a world champion as well. I can't remember ever seeing the wording partnership deal used in an announcement. Can you let, open the door on yeah, what that means? Yeah, to be honest, I think that just... Uh, I think that's being read into too much. There's, there's some commercial elements around sponsorship and brand, um, including his brand in the promotions that we do when he's headlining. He's at the stage of his career where he won't. it's not a prospect deal when he's, that he would have signed when he was 18 or 19, but very. I think, again, I think um, it's being read into too much with, with his promoter and, and we're looking forward to some massive nights. We spoke to Johnny Nelson recently. He kind of said that you felt both Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn kind of weren't too happy with your presence and getting the foot in the door with the Saudis and getting fighters on those cards. Do you feel that same way? Do you feel that sense of maybe that you're not wanted from your fellow UK promoters here on that scene? Doesn't really matter what I feel or what I don't feel, does it? Look, we're here. We've invested in our stable. We think we have some of the best fighters in the world, never mind this country. And 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 so, thankfully, His Excellency and Turkey Al Sheikh don't get involved in all that nonsense. That's all you can ask for. And and they want the best for the sport and the best fights. And that means we're going to get the best opportunities. And it's great. I'm grateful to be involved in the sport at this time, because you can feel things changing, and the opportunities that it creates for fighters is phenomenal. And and we're 
we, we, we're glad to be a major part of it. Any new signings on the horizon, Ben Saul? Oh, uh, yeah, look. <sighs> Obviously, the Olympics have been going on, but it's not going to be as crazy as it was for us in Tokyo. I think we've got a lot more established now, but we're always on the lookout. But ultimately, we have a lot of contracted fighters now. If you go through our stable, I think it's hard to argue with it. We now need to deliver. And, and that's our focus right now, rather than adding too much more. Of course, for those special talents, you're always there. And uh, there's one or two from... from um, who are out in Paris at the moment, who we like, but then one or two in the grassroots side of the sport as well. So there's some there's some opportunities, um, but right now we, we've got a huge amount of fighters to deliver for. What about potential outgoings? I believe that there's a conversation regarding Jai Patai and Chris Billen smith Is he still contracted to boxer and also Lawrence Okoli, I believe? What's the status with, with him? Yes, yeah, so Chris, definitely. And uh, he's someone that I cannot believe we've got to this stage. He's the money fight in the division. Um, He's achieved some incredible things, and now he's at the point where it's we're deciding between unifications based on what makes sense for him. Um, so yeah, um, it's amazing for that, and I'm excited to see what's next. And negotiations have started with with both Ramirez's team and, and Opatia's team. Chris is out in the states at the moment, so he's not like he's having to take some time off. He's had a grueling 12 months, been through the Coley fight, the Masternak fight the react poor fight, come through each time and hopefully he'll, he'll unify towards the end of the year. Lawrence, I think we're still in, we're still in talks with and, but he's a, he, he's a free agent and, and he'll do what's, what's best for him. And, and, um, I think for me was always a right move moving up from cruiserweight to bridgeweight and, and was, I was proud to give him that opportunity after, let's be honest, what was a very difficult year for him. And so I hope he goes on to achieve what he can and what his talent should allow him to at a weight he feels more comfortable at. Just finally for myself, last weekend we saw Derek Chisora versus Joe Joyce and Derek Chisora showed that he had a little bit more life left in him when we thought going into the fight it was Joe Joyce would be the person what a G that, that would, <laughs> what a G indeed I guess maybe he's got a burger coming your way as well mm -hmm. too Ben but as a promoter with Derek I don't know what the situation is contractually I believe he's a free agent and he fields offers would you be open to promoting Dell in the fight if that opportunity came your way um, considering some of the concerns people had about Derek look it's, it's such a difficult question that one because I've said before that Perhaps, in my opinion, he should retire because he's earned so much money and he's got a great family and he's given so much to the sport. But, you know, it's difficult because everyone always thinks back to what happened to Muhammad Ali and, and how he went on too long. And I think it's very hard for fighters to walk away from what is a drug. But then to say here and stand here and say someone should give up their livelihood is equally uncomfortable. Mm. So it's a difficult position to say to a promoter. All you hope for is that every fighter retires with money in the bank and their faculties intact. And I think that's why a lot of people have said Derek should retire because he's got both of those things. But when he loves it so much, you know, who am I to argue? I've been saying it for a while, but then on Saturday he goes and does that at the O2 and one of his most memorable nights and what an absolute legend of British boxing. Like It's remarkable what he does and what he's done and who am I to say I think it only anyone that says he should retire only comes from a place of care and and and, and someone that and that we all want the best for Derek Chisora. And uh, but listen, he knows himself better than anyone, and he's proven a lot of people wrong on Saturday night. I've taken too much of your time, Ben, but you're off to LA now. That's right. I am. Yes. Some for good huge... conversations happening over there. Yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, it's going to be a big week. I think a lot will get done, but. For me, Martin McCauley is there in a, in a huge fight. So a huge week for Boxer, huge huge night in Barnsley, and then Martin Bacoli off to, off to beat the number one US heavyweight prospect in a, in a, in a massive fight. Ben, I appreciate it. Thanks for checking us out. Thank you.